you may have all the power in the world but unless you have a good story to tell about yourselves it won't work i'm kylie just another army vet and today i'm reacting to a trs clips video this is don't be fooled by american media former rod chief reveals shocking truth so I've not seen the full Beer Bites podcast yet with Ram V. I'm not sure what to expect. As far as I know, RAW stands for Research and Analysis Wing, which is a foreign intelligence agency within the Indian government. I want to say it's similar to the CIA, but I'm not sure. If you do know for sure, please drop it in the comments. Let's get to it. Highlights channel of the Ram V show. This is TRS Clips. The next book was The Ultimate Goal. It was about how narratives are built by states, okay, and how they are countered, and what is it that make, goes into the making of those narratives. I am trying to tell my own people that you may have all the power in the world, but unless you have a good story to tell about yourselves, it won't work. could you give an example to explain this thought more this narratives are built yeah one 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 narrative is is a long term narrative sure. of superiority let's say sure like how we always portrayed as a land of snake charmers exactly okay exactly and they are the powerful the rich they have values democratic values values of fair play sporting people hmm. yeah generous people and so on so forth sure we are the poor uh, mean fellows so they they made us poor and then they laughed at us for being poor so he's referring to great britain and that is the long term that you you had no sanskrit you had nothing you were actually aryans who came down and gave you all this you were nothing without us mm. and that story sold for a long time in india i want to give another example of a narrative and that would be the war in Ukraine. Now, as you know, with any war, there's going to be war crimes by both sides. There have been war crimes by Russia as well as Ukraine. With that being said, the narrative that we see on the Western news is that we are watching these maternity hospitals and these apartment complexes be destroyed by Russian rockets, which is true, that is happening. and the world is upset by it understandably but one thing that they're conveniently not showing in this narrative is the fact that the Ukrainian military has been using the hospitals and the apartments and the housing areas to conduct operations and to set up shop that is something that we have not seen in the media at all how about you guys what is the narrative of the Ukrainian war from indian media the other is a short time thing for a particular purpose remember how the story about saddam hussein having wmds and and uh, osama bin laden al qaeda was operating there therefore we must go into that country mm. and cure it and rid it of that the war on terror yeah. that was complete bullshit it was a narrative that the us made up just so they had an excuse to go ahead and invade iraq war on war on terror to alag chala gaya this was became a war against saddam hussein for trying to make a war, uh, nuclear bomb well he was it they knew it but they manufactured intelligence then they manufactured a story then they spread it all over and then they attacked hmm. that is the narrative they built say up to march 18 2003 So in the last 5 years or so, I'm pretty sure the American media has actually shifted the narrative to actually say that we were wrong, there were no WMDs and we made everything up. I think that's the year they attacked. Before I let you move forward, why was this narrative built? What was the underlying intention? The underlying intention was that Saddam Hussein was sitting on a lot of oil. Okay. And he had been under sanctions that he could sell oil for dollars up to a particular limit because he had done kuwait and they had put him under sanctions he did a clever thing or tried to do a clever thing he started to sell oil for euros and he made a lot of money the americans realized that if this happens then they hold on the 
on the oil will go away so they had to find a narrative to get in there to stop this from happening wo kar liya hmm the rest is history then they found that uh, instead of uh, saddam hussein what they've got now is a stronger iranian presence the shias had taken over because there was a substantial percentage of iraqis who were shias in fact majority of shias so they got nervous on that then they had to stop that then they went into syria and so it became a huge mess and okay. the russians moved in into syria so that was a narrative which went wrong so basically the goal is money in one form or the other yeah uh if america can get richer by invading a country uh they will do it yeah they will tell the media portals and the general a uh, population that listen we're going in there because we're the superheroes we're going in to save this country from its evil dictator yes yes now that media narrative because it's being released to the american audiences it also finds its way to the rest of the world because the rest of world media usually copies american media true uh so then the whole world starts believing that america is batman or superman hmm. and they're going up and fighting against the joker in these yeah, multiple yeah, the, the evil but it may not truly be this the case yes. even if there's a smaller version of uh this which is true it's not the complete truth that you're seeing yep. in mainstream media and you're the former rnaw chief yep. who's saying this yep. do you think general indian audiences sh- should stop watching the news <laughs> <laughs> well i have <laughs> okay <laughs> so how should they get the information sir maybe the podcast podcasting <laughs> <laughs> don't take for granted everything you hear on the news especially if it's all coming from one media outlet it's important to get your news from multiple sources that way you can get a clearer understanding of the actual truth and not just a narrative that you're being fed i'll let you continue this so what about gaddafi what about uh, you know they were all, they were all part of the same uh system or gaddafi i think he was the military leader or the dictator in syria if someone wants to remind me in the comments i would appreciate it all right uh, gaddafi gave up the nuclear option gaddafi was sitting on a lot of oil and gaddafi wanted to make a uh, himself the leader of the arab muslim world is he the one that was dragged around on the street by a car i think that might have been him i don't remember in africa that was a no no it can't be done so hmm. he had to be got rid of okay which they did okay there's a show on netflix called how to be a dictator i think it's called how to be a dictator right it's one of the most beautifully edited and written shows and when i watched it i was blown away by the quality of work uh-huh. uh, as a content creator as a writer as a media professional i loved that show showed it to my mum showed it to some of my guests on the show abhijit mm-hmm. chawla included and um chapped their first reaction was listen i think this is a lot of propaganda on this show where mm-hmm. they are portraying these same dictators that you and me are speaking about in a much more evil light than they actually are hmm. uh that's also a part very likely a part of the same long term narrative that you're hmm. uh, speaking yeah. of yeah. to give you a very modern day example when you follow someone on instagram someone of the opposite sex and that person is posting very beautiful photos of themselves constantly you begin to get slightly more attracted to them it's just a matter of that same gorgeous face being thrown at you again and again it's the same reason someone becomes more desirable you know in the general uh, mm. public side so if you're fed a certain narrative constantly that becomes your truth yeah it becomes okay so all these dictators that we heard of over the last 20 years or so there was an element of america going into those countries in order to make some money yeah 
So in other words, in the last 20 years or so, whenever there is a conflict brewing somewhere else in the world, there's a good chance the United States is somehow involved and your motive is money. Okay. All right. Now what do we do with this information that we have? Just know it. Yeah. What is the, the idea is that if you if a large number of us can understand that this is the game, but if the large number of us say, Ki farak panda, let's carry on with this game, we'll also make some money, then you're not going to succeed. Okay. So the conditioning of my mind is not enough. Your mind has to be conditioned too, to accept what is being done to me. I didn't understand this. You see, they are saying that Saddam Hussein is an evil dictator. He has to be crushed. But if I keep saying, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, he's not so bad, then it's only half the battle won. Mm. So my mind has to be conditioned to believe that, yeah, he is really, really evil. So I get different stories planted on me. My mind gets conditioned. I accept that uh, this is so. I join the game. Because then there is some temptation for me to make some money out of it too. Hmm. Join the race. Hmm. Okay. This is what America is finding difficult these days. Ukraine has been, people around, around the world have been fairly uh, neutral about it, except for the Western lobbies. Mm. As in no one knows who the hero or the villain is. Yeah, and, and he's my hero is your villain, your villain is my hero, that kind of thing is going on. And then, now there is a rush on the dollar. Because of these sanctions, people have started trading differently. Rupee for oil. And this is growing. They're now talking about a BRICS currency. And today I read that uh, the uh, US Treasury, Secretary Treasury is saying that dollar is under pressure. What happens then? Well, the dollar is under pressure and we're also facing the debt ceiling. I think we're about to run out of money on June 1st. And that's why Joe Biden is actually leaving his G7 summit in Japan early, just so he can fly back and actually try to come up with an agreement. If they don't come up with an agreement by the deadline, then it will actually cause ripple effects within the U.S. that will actually hit the world as well. So this is a game of a superpower which has lost some of its superpower abilities. Yeah. Yeah. And it is finding it difficult to get out of it. Finding it difficult how to, I mean, if you keep saying that Ukraine must win, how will Ukraine win without, without soldiers, without ammunition, without arms? You can give it all that, but that's not enough. I think the United States has already provided Ukraine with 39 or 40 aid packages already. But my point is that we can keep on giving all this equipment to Ukraine, but all it's going to do is prolong the war. What's going to happen is Ukraine is going to eventually run out of able-bodied men to fight this war. Okay. What is the future of America in the 2030s, according to you? Would you... Go as far as predicting that? <laughs> America is still a very strong country. I mean, let's not under, underestimate its power. It has had these kinds of setbacks in the past, but it's a very, very strong country and it has a lot of, lot of good things happening for it. Okay. And the technology that you get out of it, the, the education system that you get out of it, the, all these are values that are important for the world. One thing I ask people do not take from American culture is wokeism. You need to stay as far as possible from the woke culture. Please, that needs to stop now. I pray that in the 2030s, America is not dealing with the woke mob. And they are a strong nation. I think they've gotten into a wrong track now. They'll have to, they'll have to reevaluate 
and learn to live with uh, other mm. because in 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 uh, 1974 way before before you they had a meeting on how to have how to control the population so that you can feed them what yeah hmm how to control because the you you cannot have 8 billion people on the earth or 10 billion people on the earth and feed them so population has to be restricted how do you restrict population vasectomies something has to be done because you can't share i can't share my wealth with everybody it's mine and if everybody else wants to be as rich as i am then i have to become poorer isn't it so how do how do i control by having fewer of the others reducing the population in other parts of the world Or at least reducing the growth of population so what was the outcome of that oh yes i think you should read a bit more of these uh, uh, journals and magazines that are coming out from the united states that talk about this that talk about this this uh, phenomenon or this discussion that population has to be controlled but this happened in and you talk about artificial food can you imagine food the tree is artificial this and happened you feed on it 1974 so they started discussing it in 1974 there would have been an outcome in these last 50 years could have been yes so maybe all these wars genetically modified food what is it it If causes you can control oil you can control the world you can control food you can control the people so you're saying in genetically modified foods there could possibly be some elements that might cause things like cancer i i wouldn't want to speculate but i think the genetically modified food has been Uh, known to this at least the european used to say that it is harmful so he is spot on there are plenty of articles and studies that show the dangers of genetically modified food and we're not just talking about causing conditions such as cancer we're also talking about things such as early onset puberty in young kids how in what way i still don't know but it does restrict our genetically modified seeds for instance means that you cannot replant that seed goes away after one one growth one harvest you have to buy a new seed you have to buy a new uh, insecticides everything else and you have to have water so the man who is supplying you uh, genetically modified seeds is the controller which is america which is america or american companies man monsanto and others so they are the ones who do all this okay ha huh. so <clears throat> these conspiracy theories that we hear about the sugar lobby controlling marketing narratives and uh, say the meat industry controlling narratives or you know things like this all so, this could be very true the chicken lobby ever see the documentary by morgan sporlock called super size me part 2 paise ka khel hai okay and all this actually does happen hmm all right it could be happening i have no i have no idea whether they are actually modifying all this okay but there are there are obviously vested interests in controlling a market okay whether it is meat or food or minerals so this was a very eye opening and informative podcast nothing he said really shocked me though except for that part about the 1974 meeting about reducing population or something I'm kind of curious to get more information on that actually but i really did enjoy the podcast and as i said before it's important to get your news from multiple sources this is one of the reason why it's really good that technology is starting to become so accessible with camera phones the internet and gopros because when people can upload 
the truth onto the internet, then that gives more people access to the truth. Now, I do want to say that I am proud to be an American and I'm proud of the United States of America. However, that does not mean that I am proud of everything the U.S. has done. Because obviously the U.S. has been involved in some shady shit. And I'm sure they're probably involved in something right now as we speak. With that being said, this TRS clip actually reminded me of when I reacted to that Think School video. I think it was called, Was Osama Bin Laden Right About America? I put that video right here for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If I do react to the full podcast, I'll put it right here. If you do want to help support the channel, I could always use a like, sub, share, thanks.